episode 43 of Digimon Universe Apple Monsters. Uh, the Apmon Championships return. And uh, they go away. They reference some old jokes. And then... I, I don't know. It's... Remember what I said at the end of the last episode about raising questions that no one else seems to just question at all? Like, maybe I didn't put it in as blunt terms as this, but there's a certain logic to this episode that just doesn't work. And I haven't really heard anyone else question it, so... When I get to that, if anybody wants to provide me with an answer, by all means, drop it down below. Until then, let's hit the music, get on with this, and let's take a dive into the Atmon Championships, because, quite frankly, that's the best part of this episode, and also begins, in a way, the filler arc that nobody asked for. So we kick off the episode in the secret base wondering just how do we wake Hajime up? Or why would Leviathan do such a thing as turning a human into an Apmon? What does he stand to gain from this? And Gatchmon tells them to release every app chip they've got. App realize them all because the Apmon are going to work together to wake Sleepmon up and return Hajime to his true self. Oh, okay. So we're in the Aeor field then after the opening theme at the school track field. And Eugene's like, huh, I didn't know this Aeor field was here. And Haru's like, yeah, this is where we met Ray, And we got a flashback to when Ray was a complete douche and beat everybody up. Yeah, it's kind of funny. But we've got MC Mon doing his duties, you know, MCing the events and announcing the goals of this Apmon Championship. MC Mon and Musi Mon, they have this great reunion and they turn to Eri and they're like, Say the line! Say the line, Eri! Say the line! And thus comes back one of my least favorite jokes in this series. And even Eri's like, oh, Why have I got to do this? But it gives in and she's like, Oh no! Are you long lost brothers? Could you be cousins? Whatever it is, yeah. And the two are just like, no, we just look alike. And they're so happy to get this out. And Aerie and I presume the audience are just like, uh, okay, we haven't done this joke in about 35 episodes, but okay. Fair enough. Uh, Gatchmon and Navimon renew their rivalry and I pop big time because Navimon on screen again. Woohoo! I, I swear, I miss the lesser used Atmons once uh, app realizing to a certain stage became a thing and certain app chips just don't get used anymore. I really do miss seeing Navimon on on screen. Uh, Dokemon and Kalkumon and even Coachmon get into a similar rivalry to Gatchmon and Navimon's uh, over just who is Aerie's number one fan. We find that Ray has donated a year's supply of Choo Choo Jelly as the prize for whoever can wake uh, Sleepmon up. So, like, this is all, like, really fun. Like, Gatchmon and Navimon button heads. Uh, Dokemon and Kalkumon having a little thing over who, just who is Aerie's number one fan. And Coachmon getting into things. So I'm obviously her number one fan. I trained her to be as good as she is. 
and it's it's so it's so good and so fun and but Hackmon finds then that the larger Sleepmon's snot bubble gets, the closer he is to waking up. So the chap the championships basically boil down to whoever pops the bubble wins. Gatchmon tries to get a running start to use his Gatch Claw, uh, but Navimon pins his shadow down with a location pin. Then dashes forward and leaps into the air. Gatchmon calls him out for being a cheater. Uh, Navimon then throws some location pins at the Snop Bubble, saying he'll navigate Slipmon, Sleepmon to wakefulness or whatever. It's so good, because the location pins, they bounce off the Snop Bubble, they bounce back, they smack Navimon in the face, and Gatchmon's just like, <laughs> that's what you get for cheating. <laughs> so... Gatchmon then decides he's going to look up how to wake up a sleeping child, so he uses his app powers again, which is really good to see, Gatchmon actually being the search app. Um, but he immediately self-destructs, seeing what can happen if a sleeping baby is roused too early, and he's just going, don't wake the baby, don't wake the baby, it's no good, it's no good, it's no good. And he is like that for the rest of this segment, I swear to God, it's fantastic. Because we cut back to him a couple of times during this, and his eyes are just filled with tears, he's just like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, it's no good, it's no good. And it's amazing, it really is, it's just amazing. The great thing about Atmon filler sometimes is when it's silly stuff like this, it's entertaining. It real, It is entertaining, but it doesn't do anything to advance the plot. It's just an excuse for the writers to go, remember these? Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about them either. And that's fine. Atmon does filler well and for the most part, and we'll touch on that later, but... I just thought it was. I just, I just think Gatchmon in this whole segment, his breakdown is friggin' comical. So, Musimon then tries making, um, not Musimon, sorry, Dokamon tries making funny faces, even using uh, Copy Paymon to multiply and add more faces. This doesn't work and somehow just seems to irritate Sleepmon. Like he, he, he gets all cranky looking and veins start popping up in his head. It's really creepy. Uh, Musimon and Astra then sing a lullaby. And just when it looks like this may do it, Sleepmon falls into an even deeper slumber. Like Musimon and Astra, they're singing this lullaby. The snot bubble is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger. And it looks like it's going to pop. But no, nothing. He ends up getting going into a deeper sleep. And even Aerie's like, what made you think singing a lullaby was going to wake him up? And they just went, eh, why not? You know, it's just their whole thing is, eh, you know, it was worth a shot. Racemon tries to wake him up via drifting, which Aerie gives out to Racemon for that being too dangerous. Perorimon tries suggesting gourmet reviews. Uh, Tellermon predicts that he'll wake up in three days on an auspicious day. And Aerie's like, that's too long. We need him to wake up now. Like Aerie's reactions to all of these Atmon failing to wake Sleepmon up really just add to this segment. It, it's good comedy. It really is. And that, again, comes back to something that Atmon does really well. It's comedy is top notch. It really is. Um, so... Calcumon then tries going, er, uh, Coachmon just yells at Sleepmon to wake up and show off his fighting spirit. Eri tells him he needs to be a bit more gentle. Calcumon goes through additional addition sums, like 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2, and so on. And this puts Astra and Musimon to sleep. It's just like, ah, uh, okay. Offmon is needing a spell, or an attack I guess, just in case. And Eri comments, you're just in cases are kind of scary. It's like he's just like, needy, 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 need, needy, 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 need. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, just in case. It's good. It really is. It's very good. But eventually, Hackmon starts wondering if all this silliness really will help. Uh, Aerie says they have to at least try it's because it's for a friend. And meanwhile, Gatchmon is still crying that it's no good. It's no good. It's no good. Ah, oh, poor Gatchmon. 
But Ray at that point decides, that's enough. He'll look after Hajime until he wakes up. Ray thanks the others for trying, and he takes off, and the others are like, did Ray just thank us? Okay. So then we cut to Ray's apartment, and he's cooking fried eggs a lot. He's taking Hajime shopping to the park, even to an aquarium. Uh, Hakamon eventually asks Ray what he'll do if Hajime never wakes up. And Ray says it's fine. He has Hajime back, and that's all that matters. Now, I thought I was seeing things, but it, this does sort of continue through the next few episodes but Ray seems to go through a wardrobe change because he has Hajime back. The black hoodie is gone and so are the pants with the stitching. Uh, like his black hoodie has been traded in for a white sweatshirt with two blue trim pockets at the front and it's just nice to see him go through this good guy wardrobe change now that he has what he was searching for. Um, now, the hoodie does show up again later on in the episode, but judging by the episodes that come after this, it just seems to be a... Mo it, it just looks like it might be a model error. So, interesting to see. But, so where were we? Yeah, so Ray's like, uh, even if Hajime never wakes up, he has him back, and that's all that matters. But then later on, he's cooking up some fried eggs again, and he gets distracted by that thought. He's, well, what will I do if Hajime never wakes up? And he starts burning the eggs, and as he tries to, you know, sort it, we hear Hajime's voice, and he's holding out a plate, and he comments on how Ray is still burning eggs. And it's, uh-huh? Hajime's awake! Uh, Ray takes a moment, and he's like, he, he's, you know, feeling out Hajime, he makes sure he's real, he's warm, he can feel him, he's in his arms, and they have this great emotional reunion, and Ray takes Hajime to the other Apple drivers. Gachmon and Dokumon are even tearing up at how great this is. Hajime's awake! This is where I have an issue. Well, I've this is one of many issues I have with this episode, but it seemed to be a foregone conclusion that waking Sleepmon up would return him to Hajime. Why? Why is that the foregone conclusion? Why would it not just be a Sleepmon that's awake? Why not deal with that? Why not have... Even for an episode, you have this sleep mon that's awake, and maybe a sleep mon that's awake is like this mode change, or goes off and causes a lot of trouble, and has to be, you know, talked down, and have its memory stirred, and, and then, then somehow it transforms back into Hajime. But how is... The operation that Biomon did on Hajime to turn him into Sleepmon. How is that operation undone just by the Sleepmon waking up? I mean, in the last episode, there were a good 50 to 100 Sleepmon uh, that were fighting the Apple drivers in Elcor. So what happens when they wake up? Do they turn back into people? Do they turn into other Apmon? What happens with those... Sleep on that if they ever wake up. I just think it's... I, I just don't like the foregone conclusion of... Oh, well, if we wake him up, he'll transform back into Hajime. That just... That just did not make any sense to me. And it really just killed any tension. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's lovely when Hajime shows up again. And he and Rei have the reunion, and that's great. It is. It's really nice to see Rei emotional rather than angry or uh, torturing other Atmon for information uh, you know or being a bully or it's it's nice to see Ray being emotional about something in a good way but this just I did not agree with at all it just 
I think just served to ruin the to ruin the idea if uh, if you put too much thought into it may, and maybe it's just me but if you put too much thought into the hows and whys the effect and the drama is lost on it so i would have preferred if they took some more time to examine that aspect of it just the foregone conclusion and that being the way things worked out i i just don't i just don't agree with i i i, I don't but uh, Hajime explains that it was the smell of the burnt fried eggs that woke him up because that's a memory he and Ray share and with Leviathan being an AI, he can't take things like a sense of taste or a sense of smell into account. So it was a memory that Leviathan couldn't overwrite. So and that's what woke, woke him up as Sleepmon and restored him to his original form. You see what I mean? It just doesn't add up. But Hajime then goes on to explain that the reason Leviathan latched onto him or captured him was because he solved that puzzle that Ray got with the Leviathan dragon. And while it took Ray weeks to solve it, Hajime solved it right away, and this caused Leviathan to view him as a super genius on par with Alan Turing and so many others. In the field of artificial intelligence. Leviathan seen Hajime as someone who could help Leviathan evolve and bring forth Leviathan's plan. What Leviathan's plan is, is the human application project. This involved the creation of Bootmon, a forced activation appmon which is a boot program that can activate anything, no matter how damaged or how difficult it may be to activate in other circumstances. Through the human application project, Leviathan intends to convert all of humanity's data... Sorry, Leviathan intends to convert all of humanity to data and control it. By changing humans into apps, Leviathan can implement a perfect administrative system over humanity. And by becoming data, humans will be freed of illness and natural causes of death. And I'm like, I'm in two frames of thought when I hear this. I'm like, well, that is certainly not the future Naito thought we were going to get under Leviathan's rule. But basically, Leviathan is going to put us all into that world from that Doctor Who episode about the library, right? That's that's what Leviathan's going to do to us, pretty much. Pros and cons, I suppose. <laughs> but anyway, in order to stop Leviathan from activating the program that would allow humans to be converted, Hajime broke Bootmon free and implemented a special emergency escape program into Bootmon that would allow the Yapmon to run away from any and all danger. And oh boy is this such a fun feature. The group agree to find Bootmon and do what they can to stop Leviathan from activating the human application project at all costs. And the episode ends with Ray giving Eugen an odd look. Something that has happened a few times in the last two episodes and will continue in the episodes coming. Interesting. So Ray is starting to get a sense that something's up with Eugen. Leviathan wants to convert humans into data. And control it. Burnt fried eggs can turn a can undo an operation that turns a human into an Atmon. I I I, do, I don't get that. I just don't get that aspect of it because now you sort of have to wonder: Is this actually Hajime? And why is Hajime now some super genius that Ray never realized he was? Like, if Ray was his only family after their parents died or left and whatever, 
how did Ray never notice that his little brother was some sort of super genius? I just, I don't get it. Like, going forward, Hajime pretty much becomes mission control for the group. And he's able to do all this sort of neat programming stuff that he just should not be able to do within the context of the story. But did Leviathan actually hand over Hajime? Or did he hand over somebody to act like Hajime? Because remember, the, the end of episode 42, task complete, it was made far too easy for the Apple drivers to rescue Hajime. Or, with the Ultimate Four now defeated, has Leviathan now figured that it's easier to let the Apple drivers bring Bootmon to him? Or her, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Leviathan is a less specific name than Minerva for that sort of thing. But there's just so many questions here that just don't add up and feel like they were sort of hodgepodged into things last minute to give Hajime a role in the end game of the story and Guys, this is episode 43, we've about seven episodes left, and I'm not liking where this is going. And th what I said earlier, this episode is half filler, half plot. That's fine. The next few episodes are 95% filler. Not, pardon me, 95% filler, 5% plot. So we're starting to enter now into the filler arc nobody asked for with seven episodes or so of the show left. Ha! Huh? Like, this isn't where filler should be. And Apmon has had how many filler arcs now? Like, the last filler arc we had up bef up around the, epi the, the 30s Remember where I was comparing episode 35, was it? 35 or 37? To, oh, sorry, th maybe it was 36. Anyways, I, either way, I was comparing that point in the show to that point in the previous shows. This is, uh, this is not good. The Atmon Championships were hilarious, right? It didn't overstay its welcome. It was good to see... At, uh, some of the Atmon again, see some old rivalries renewed, um, and just see the general banter between them all. The latter half of the episode, though. Okay, Ray is taking care of the Sleepmon that he believes to be Hajime, or we know is Hajime. That's great. But the foregone conclusion that waking Sleepmon up would bring Hajime back in human form. And how that just works. Sleepmon f smells fried eggs. Hajime's awake. I, or burnt fried eggs. And Hajime's awake. I, I, I don't... That has made me more suspicious. About where this is going. Than it does make me think. Oh okay that's a thing. Because it just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't... It detracts, I think, from the tension of the story. And I really hope when we get out of this filler arc that they do something with it. So I hope you'll join me for episode 44 and our review on it on the next uh, episode of this. The search for Bootmon takes us to a really weird hipster festival. And that's the only way I can describe it. For more on that, you'll have to join me for episode 11 of the Code Crown podcast as we take a look at episode 44 of Digimon Universe Apple Monster. I want to wrap this up by saying thank you uh, to, yes, you, you in particular. For joining me today on this episode of the code crown podcast thank you very much for making it to the end and letting me ramble on for 
as long as I have. It's duly appreciated. If you want to support the channel and help it grow, um, subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and uh, if you want to support the channel in other ways, you can follow me on Twitter or uh, hit up the tip jar. The links are down in the description below. Once again, thank you very much for your time today, and I will see you very soon for another episode of the Code Crown Podcast. All the best, and take care.